Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to take a closer look at the Latte Panda, and in particular I'm going to compare it with the Raspberry Pi 3, I'm going to answer some of your questions, and I'm going to run some comparative performance tests. Right, so here we have a Latte Panda sitting next to a Raspberry Pi 3. And the first thing you'll notice is that the Latte Panda is a, a slightly bigger board. Now, I have to say at the start of this comparison that some people have already said to me in the comments here on YouTube, this comparison is unfair because the price point of these computers is very different. The Raspberry Pi 3 here costs about $35, at least in theory, whereas the Latte Panda, the standard version of the Panda here, costs $109 with Windows or $79 without Windows. So the Panda is three times more expensive than the Pi and therefore is you know, a, a different computer in that sense. However, I think people will always compare different single board computers, particularly against the Raspberry Pi, and that's therefore what I'm going to do here. Now, if we start out with processing power, we know that on the Panda, we have got an Intel Cherry Trail Z8300 64-bit quad-core Atom CPU. And we know since the last video, it is now on the bottom of the board. There you can see the top of the, the thermal compound attaching it to this, to this metal. So that processor runs at a 1.44 gigahertz as a standard speed and boosts to 1.84 gigahertz. In comparison, the Raspberry Pi 3 has got its system on a chip, the BCM2837 on, on the top here. This contains an ARM Cortex-A53 CPU with a base frequency of 600 megahertz, boosting to 1.2 gigahertz. So there's no doubt in terms of raw processor power, the Panda is a more powerful board than the Pi. That said, it's just worth noting that whilst these are both 64-bit computers, they're both currently, at least here, running 32-bit operating systems. The, uh, Raspberry Pi 3 running its 32-bit version of Raspbian, and the Panda here, the base version of the Panda, running the 32-bit version of Windows 10. When it comes to memory, we have got two gigabytes of DDR3 RAM here on the Panda, compared to one gigabyte of DDR2 RAM here on the Pi, so again, the Panda wins in terms of RAM. In terms of graphics, the Panda has got Intel Gen 8 graphics running between 200 and 500 megahertz, Whereas on the Pi, we've got the Broadcom Video Core 4 running at 400 megahertz. So it's difficult to get a real comparison on the graphics. Um, they're, they're fairly similar, at least in, in, in theory. In terms of connectivity, on the Panda, we've got our two USB 2 ports and we've got our one USB 3 port, whereas we've got four USB 2 ports here on the Pi. And in fact, I would give that to the Panda. I think having the USB 3 port is worth losing one of those ports. Three ports is still a reasonable number. Both of the boards have got their HDMI socket there on, on the Panda and, and here on, on the Pi. And they both also got the, uh, the audio connector there on the side there and, and composite video. There we are down, down the back there on the, uh, the Panda. In terms of storage, the Panda clearly wins because the Panda has got here on, on the base model 32 gigabytes of onboard flash storage. We know now under the, the shield on the top. Whereas the Raspberry Pi, of course, comes without storage. You have to add in the end of it your SD card, your micro SD card to put your storage on. So although we called this a $35 computer at the start for the, for the Raspberry Pi 3, that isn't really true. You have to spend, I would imagine, at least $10, $15, $20 $10 to add your storage to actually make the thing work. In terms of networking and that type of connectivity, we've got on both boards here, we've got onboard Wi-Fi, onboard Bluetooth, and onboard 100 megabit Ethernet. Ethernet on the front of the Pi and on the back here. There we are, look, on the Panda. Funnel thing, both boards have very much their credit is very good connectivity for, for microcontroller type purposes. On the Pi, we've got the standard Pi GPIO pins down here. And on the Panda, we've got the Arduino connector, standard Arduino connector, and also a connector for GPIO pins connected through to the processor. So both of the boards have got very good connectivity. Right, just before we do some tests comparing the Pi 3 and the Latte Panda, here we are in Windows 10 on the Latte Panda. And I just wanted to report that since I was made my first Latte Panda video. I've been trying out Windows on here quite a bit and it runs very smoothly. It works re really nicely in fact. I've also installed some software as you can see. I've installed a LibreOffice. 
I've installed GIMP, and I've installed Google Chrome. Let's just run up Google Chrome because people asked me after the last video, will it run Google Chrome? It does, it goes to all the best websites in Google Chrome. Several people asked me, will it run a YouTube video? Okay, so let's go to a YouTube video. For example, the, uh, the Latte Panda introduction video. That seems to work, let's just full screen that. I've not got the sound connected up properly here, you're only hearing it through the monitor of my microphone, but the main thing is the vision, and as you can hopefully see, this is running perfectly well. I think YouTube video, in, in, on, at least on the web, runs probably better on a Latte Panda than it does on, on a Pi 3. We don't really get any stuttering or problems at all. So let's uh, get rid of that. You can also run standard video files. Here's a 1080p video file we saw in a previous Explaining Computers video. If we just run that up, again full screen it. And again you can see here our Steam Engine and its counter are running perfectly well, no stuttering. Video playback of 1080p works absolutely fine. And again, I'll get rid of that. Final thing I want to point out is to do with the storage. If I do properties on the uh, C drive here, which is the 32 gigabytes of onboard flash, you'll see that that 32 gigabyte flash formats to a capacity of 28.2 gigabytes usable. That's roughly what we would expect. And here, with the software I've installed, GIMP, Google Chrome, and LibreOffice, I've used 11.3 gigabytes of space on this. I've got 16.8 gigabytes free, which is still not bad. And in case you're wondering, when you first get the Latte Panda, I found I had 7.85 gigabytes used and 20.3 gigabytes free. So that very much answers the question that although you've got 32 gigabytes of storage, which isn't a lot on a Windows system, it's running perfectly well here and you can install some software and everything runs okay. So that was just a little look around Windows running on the Latte Panda. Let's now do some comparative performance tests comparing it to the Raspberry Pi 3. So, to compare the performance of the Latte Panda and the Raspberry Pi in a real-world situation, what I'm going to do is to launch and then use some common programs. Now, I'll say from the start, I know some of you won't like this because these bits of software, whilst they are the same package, will obviously be a different implementation on Linux or on Windows, but at least what I'm showing here is something you might practically want to do with these machines, and it'll show us a bit about their relative performance. So, the first thing I'm going to do is to launch LibreOffice Writer. So I'll take this screen down so we can see both the Latte Panda and the Raspberry Pi running on the screen. And then by the magic of filmmaking, I will push the button to start the package at exactly the same time on both of them. And they're going off there. Shouldn't take long to launch LibreOffice, but uh, we'll see what happens. And uh, the Raspberry Pi has won. It's won by, by some distance there, hasn't it? Now, of course, this is a test of storage as well as processing power. It might well be that the micro SD card, the SanDisk, extreme car put in the Raspberry Pi is faster in terms of storage than the storage on the Panda, but even if that's true, that's an interesting result to have found. So, for my next test I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to launch GIMP. Now GIMP is a much bigger package than LibreOffice Writer, and it's also a more processor-intensive package to launch because it loads in lots of plugins. So once again, I will zoom things down so we've got both of the computers running side by side on the screen, and then hit the button at the same moment and see what happens. Um, difficult to tell, isn't it? But it's getting there pretty close, still going on, lots of things loading into GIMP. And, oh, and again, the Pi has won, and uh, the Latte Panda will get there fairly soon, 15.9 seconds versus 11.3. Again, that could be a storage issue as much as a processing issue, but again, it's, we can say with, with certainty, if you launch the GIMP package on a Raspberry Pi 3, it launches faster than it would under Windows 10 on a Latte Panda. Right, for my final test, I'm going to apply a neon filter, a complicated filter in GIMP, to an image which is 3000 by 2000 pixels in size, so quite a big image. So I'll go into Edge Detect and Neon. I'll use the default settings. Again, I'll do this on both machines simultaneously, and we'll start them off. This is very much a test of processor power. You would expect the Panda to win here in terms of both processor power and available RAM. Looks like it's going to win. And uh, yes, the Panda has won this one, 10.3 seconds versus 11.7. So I think the tests there are fairly 
as they are, you can take your own uh, impressions from that, but clearly there isn't a massive amount of performance difference between the Latte Panda and the Raspberry Pi, at least in these tests I've run. And yes, there are other tests you could run, I'm sure, which might show different results. The Latte Panda and the Raspberry Pi 3 are both very powerful single board computers. The Pi 3 wins out in terms of price and also due to its massive installed user base and associated online support. However, because it runs Windows 10, the Latte Panda provides access to a far wider range of software and peripherals, and it's also easy to use right out of the box for all those people who aren't familiar with Linux. Talking of Linux, in my next video, I'm going to be creating a bootable USB drive with Linux Mint on it, so it can be tried out on any computer. But now that's it for another video. If you've liked this video, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.